She's just a girl, but she's on fire. Hi, everybody. Ali Alvarez here, and this is another part of our 30-day Millionaire Mindset Expansion. And today, we get to talk about saving money, a really powerful skill set that you can sharpen and get better at. So I want to explain to you a little story that I had talked about when I did the credit card arbitrage, which is essentially what I did was I borrowed $10,000 on a credit card for 0% for one year. And as I had mentioned that I was starting to get involved in real estate groups, I actually took that money and borrowed it to invest into a real estate group. And uh, the intention was that I was going to pay off the debt and then turn around and recoup my real estate investment and then I would actually have some some considerable money coming back to me. And um, so I had about a year to do this. And I, because the 0% the was going to run out and my I set this intention in my mind was that I was not going to let it go into interest accrual. That I was going to just pay it off and then have... The, this money to pull out of the real estate investment. And I worked my butt off for a year to really pay off the debt. And I really, really focused. I focused my mind on that's my intention. And this was like a say, I kind of had it as a savings goal. So not only it was a kind of a dual action thing, it was step into debt and pull out of it. At the same time, I knew it was going to be a way to, I, that I could actually save money. So um, at the end of the year, I hit my goal. And I'm going to share five tips around this, uh, little tactics that I use to, to succeed at this. Um, and I remember the day that I had cleared the debt to zero and that I was able to actually pull this real estate money out of the fund. And there was something was like a psychological shift in me. It was the first time in my life that I had $10,000 to my name and what that felt like to walk down the street. I remember walking down the street of New York City and feeling really, really powerful. I was like, I have no debt and I have $10,000 to my name. There was something very, very freeing about that moment where I knew like because of that, I could make bigger choices, I could decide to go and do something without having to dip into borrowed money from the future, that I could actually borrow money from myself, that I could actually fund something myself without taking away from my future. And the feeling of that was really, really, really powerful. Um, so I'm going to get into the five tips um, around this that were really, really helpful to, for me to, to actually create this, this, this money in my life. So the first, um, they're kind, what, what you're going to see is if you've watched the debt one, and if you haven't, if debt's not a major issue for you, um, there's actually some really great um, tips and ideas in that one anyway, just for working on your money aspect. Um, so there's some really good stuff in the debt one. It's long, but it, there's some good stuff. Um, and what you're going to find is that there's some of these tips on the savings are actually going to mirror the, the debt ones, the getting out of debt. So the first one is the growth list. And this is really the flip opposite of what we did when we were looking at eradicating debt. We had our numbers in front of us and we were focused, we had them posted on the fridge and we were focused on sort of scratching them out and lowering that number and getting that number down to zero. So the what we're in essence, the opposite is we're going to create a, a growth list. So we're going to set an income goal on our fridge. You might send, set an income goal for the year and you might break that down into what, what do I want to save every single month? And I got my husband involved and we took a year and we really sat down and we focused. And from that $10,000, I charged forward. And I kind of got my husband on board and I was like, this is what we're going to do. And again, like these five tactics, I'm going to show you these five tips. Um, because of these tips, my husband and I were actually say, were able to save like fifty or $60,000 in the course of maybe a year and a half 
um, around there. It was a really good chunk of money. And, and we had this intention of this is going, we're going to buy a house and this is our down payment. So we really put the pedal to the metal and, um, and it really is a big piece of that is focusing your mind. Um, so the going back to the growth list, which is our number one, our first tip is, um, you want to write it again, you're going to put it on your fridge and you you want to have that number in front of you. This is what I'm going for. And you want to again, mark it and watch it get bigger. And so you're kind of writing like, this is what I'm going to save this month. You can even put down like the 12 months of the year and each month that you put that $500 away, $1,000 away, whatever it is, put a star next to it, you know, yay, I hit this. Um, and then, you know, in months that you can do a little bit more, you do a little bit more and always put in like your, your top tally. Like, so you're writing in, now I have this much in my savings. And so it's not just the number is in front of you every single day. Again, we're training our mind. So it's not that we are, um, It's not that we're just hiding it and it's like sort of tucked away in our bank account or we see our bank statement once a month. We are seeing this number every single day and the power of being able to see that number every single day. Again, we're training the subconscious mind to grow. We're like tilling our soil to grow our savings. That's number one. Number two is understanding your set points, right? We all have financial set points. And it's similar to, uh, we have with weight set points, the same thing. Our body has this homeostasis of this is where our, you know, our weight's going to be around. And our behavior is going to support that. Our behavior supports the same, at the same time, a financial set point. That financial set point can be in the negative. It can be in the positive. Um, and the idea is to break it and to change it and to raise it. And to get, if you're in debt, to get out of the negative and into the positive and wherever you are is to, to sort of create it almost in a limitless way to sort of break beyond that, to go beyond, because it's connected to our limiting beliefs about ourselves and our self-worth. So to understand your money set point, a lot of these tips are going to help you kind of break through. And that's what sort of lets the game of writing it on your fridge. So it's to help you break through those set points. I'm going to share a story with you about that. Um, my mom when I was heading off to college and about 18 years old, my mom gave me this wonderful piece of advice. And she's like, always make sure you have a thousand dollars to your name. And I took that in and I lived by that. So here I was going from Ohio to the big city of New York and really doing it on my own, no financial support from my parents whatsoever. And I knew that like, it was sink or swim for me. And that one little, she couldn't give me money to go to New York, but she gave me that little piece of advice. And I, I held true to that. So what I did in my mind was I created a set point. And so that thousand dollars became zero in my head. So every time I saw my bank account, that if it said a thousand dollars, I read that as I have zero, there's nothing because that thousand dollars was sort of like, um, was my emergency fund. And I was able to maintain always having a thousand dollars in the positive for like forever like ever since my ever since I left home I never ever dipped below that and it's pretty amazing because in my mind thousand of that thousand dollars was zero and you can raise that you could be like no now it's ten thousand dollars and if I ten thousand dollars is zero and that's your emergency fund depending upon what you need to do like Susie Orman suggests that you have like six months of living expenses in the bank account to be able to support yourself in the event of job loss or a major catastrophe in your life, like a loss of, of a family member that where you need some time, um, that's a really powerful thing to have that. And many people don't. Many people don't. And that's a really amazing first step, if you don't have something like that, to create it. Because, uh, again, kind of going back to that, that day that I stepped out into the world where I was like, I have no debt and I have $10,000 to my name. The power of that was huge. And you'll experience that for yourself by creating a set point for yourself that you can be like, all right, this is, this money will support me in the event of if I ever need it. And I'm not going to touch it unless I really, really, really need, unless my world falls apart 
and I need to cocoon, then that, then you touch that money. But other than that, you don't touch it, you just build upon it. So that was number two, is working with your set points. Number three is the T. Harv Ecker money jars. So when I had mentioned that my husband and I, when we really sat down and we focused together and we had, were able to save around like 50 or $60,000, one of the ways we did it was the T. Harv Ecker money jars. And T. Harv Ecker, um, wonderful man, I took his Millionaire Mind workshop and another workshop for, from him. And in the Millionaire Mind workshop, he, he's, he was the first person I ever came across who talked about this is like organizing your money and giving your money as it comes into your life a job to do. And he has the breakdown. Um, I'll put a slate up for you so you can uh, take notes on it. Is that 55% of what you make is your living expenses. 10% uh, off the top before you do anything else is you pay yourself first. And that was, a, again, a guiding principle. So it's 10% you pay yourself. 55% is your living expenses. 10% goes to taxes. And um, I'll put it down here. <laughs> Where did my notes go? Here we go. 10% uh, goes to tithing which is, if you're not familiar with the term tithing, is that you're giving it out, you're donating it. And I want to speak on that a little bit. There, that's a really, really powerful thing to do. Um, in my year of savings, we were knuckle busters. Dang. Like, we stopped Netflix. <laughs> we would get movies from the library, stopped eating out at restaurants, um... And I cut back on a lot of extraneous things because I was really focused on we're going to buy a house, we're going to have a down payment. And so I cut out all of these things that were, that in the end I really didn't need. Um, and, but I stuck to tithing. And there was something amazing about that. I, in Being in New York, it became this really exciting game where I would have 10% of my income every single month to give away. And I found myself like having like seven to 10 to 20 bucks in my pocket, like going, oh my gosh, like who's going to get my money today? Who's, who am I going to give this to? And I would find these amazing subway artists and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the joy I felt of being able to even like when you see the guys that are doing like the little, the young kids that are doing the flips in the subway, like giving them each five bucks. I was like, oh, it's awesome, you know, and how good it felt for me to be able to extend this out and, you know, and being able to make choices around uh, being able to tithe. And another, another time in my life, I had a friend who was struggling with chronic Lyme disease and that was my, my tithing practice was I would send her, I mean, it might be a check for 20 or 30 bucks every week or every month but I was like this is this is my tithing and um, it helped her on a on a small financial level but a psychological level too to just feel that she was supported and it was such a good feeling for me now too knowing that like this is where my money's going and I'm, I'm helping a friend out and um, so it can be really really powerful and so I, the, the tithing one don't skip over it really. And, and when you give money generously with an open heart out to the world, you're really sending a huge message out of confidence in yourself, confidence that abundance will flow back to you. And I find that the more I give out, the more I've tithed in my life, those, when I really focused on it, those times in my life, more came back to me. It always came back to me a hundredfold. I, 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 in the experience like in really unusual and really really beautiful ways so that's a big one big one and then um, the next piece of the D. T. Harvecker jars is 10% to play that's an awesome one so I loved how T. Harv Ecker talked about this one because this is one that I needed to hear and T. Harv Ecker talks about it as if we don't give ourselves money to play, the universe will get, take our money in a not so fun way. So would you rather let go of some cash in a fun way or would you rather let go of your, some cash because your car breaks down? Mm, yeah, you choose, right? Not such, a, not such a difficult choice. And so 
that's another really great way also to kind of break through the scarcity mindset if, if you're if that's something that you deal with too is that if we can really give ourselves permission to give ourselves money to play with you know like here's your allowance and just go blow it just go and have fun we all need that and even and I'm going to say this to if if any any of you listening are, are dealing with some debt that you're trying to clear keep the play like give yourself money to reward yourself in in different ways right you need you do need that you do need that it's very very important and then you have about five percent left of the breakdown if you look at a hundred percent of your money um, you can take that five percent and do it in a, an emergency fund it can be miscellaneous you can add it to um, a save or savings um, so you can kind of play with these figures and these numbers, but when I when I started to categorize, the point being is when I started to categorize and break down my money and say, you know, I organized it. And by that act of organization, it created this sort of organized budget and I was able to really tuck it away. And as I got my husband involved and we both kind of got on the same page with it, we were able to really put a considerable considerable amount of money away in, in a pretty quick time so it takes that focus and it but it works totally totally works okay number four let go to receive so I had mentioned that we stopped I mean I know I love Netflix Netflix is awesome um, but we might have to especially if we want to if we're really in this place where you have to kind of get over the hill get over and, and get to the other side of the fence financially, sometimes we have to let go of things in order to bring other things in. Sometimes it means selling stuff, right? I know that sometimes there are people who, who've wanted to, to buy an educational course in their life and they're like, the education is more valuable than the TV, <laughs> right? And so they would sell the TV so they could study with the teacher or buy this educational product so they could grow themselves and therefore grow their future. And that became, the education is always an investment in ourselves. A TV is pretty much 98% of the time a, a, a drain of, our, of ourselves and our, our time. Um, so you can really look at your life and say, what is in my life that is actually costing me money on some level? What can I let go of so that I can create space to receive what I really want? Um, Aaron Rashkin, uh, someone I really love and as a mentor, he always talks about what do you need to let go of in order to create the life that you want? It's a really big question. It's a really great question to start to like soul search and get clear on with yourself. Really powerful way to move forward. And um, the last one is tithing, which I kind of really covered because it was part of the jars. So again, I guess worth mentioning twice is make tithing a part of your personal practice. And you can choose an organization. There's lots of really great organizations. You can give it toward an artist. You can give it toward um, maybe a family member that um, might need extra support. We all have family members in our family sometimes that are either challenged with health problems or just challenged with being in the world in, 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 um, in, the, in a way, I, you know. So sometimes we have people that are close to us that could actually use the extra money or you can also give it to an organization you decide. But it's really fun to be able to, to take what you create and share it. It's a really, really powerful thing to do. So have a great day. I hope these were helpful. Please leave comments below about uh, any thoughts you have. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing you again. Have a great one. Bye.